Hey programmers, I'm Alvin from CoderBite, and today I want to teach you about the stack data structure. Stacks are a very classic data structure that we can actually utilize to implement some further algorithms down the line. And so I want to make sure we have a good handle on just what a stack is and of course how to build one. So let's jump into our agenda for today. In this lesson, what I want to do is, of course, define what a stack is, as well as go over some common applications and use cases of stacks, and in the long run, also implement a stack in two different ways. That is, I want us to implement a stack using an array, as well as a linked list. So let's start from the very beginning. What is a stack? Well, a stack is a type of data structure, and in particular, it's one where we can store many items, right? So you should think of a stack as a collection of multiple items. So far, this doesn't seem too descript, right? There are many data structures that store multiple items. So what really identifies a stack? A stack is particular in the operations that we can perform on the stack. Mainly, we can push items to the top of the stack, as well as pop or remove items from the top of the stack. So because a stack can only be manipulated at one end, we call it the top, uh, that actually gives us a nice ordering. We say that a stack has a last in, first out order, or it's a LIFO data structure. And we'll kind of visualize why that is right now. So as always, I think it's really important that we have a really solid mental model and visualization for how a stack behaves, right? So I think off the bat, the initial thing you should realize with a stack is we should probably think about it as if it's like a vertical structure, right? Stack, meaning that you put things one on top of the other. So here I just have denoted the bottom of my stack. And let's say that I wanted to add an item into the stack. We say that we're going to push a new item to the stack. So let's say I wanted to push the item cat onto my stack. This just means we take cat and put it on top of our stack. Since our stack is empty right now, it kind of looks like this. Let's say I wanted to push dog. As always, when we push, we're pushing to the top of the stack, which means that dog should end up on top of cat. So right now we can see that dog is currently at the top of the stack. Let's do one more push. Let's say I push mouse. Cool, so here's my stack of three things where I have my mouse on top. Let's say I wanted to remove items from my stack. What I do is actually pop items from the top of my stack. So if I pop my stack, that means I'm removing mouse, right? You can't choose uh, which item you remove from the stack. You are necessarily always removing the tippy top, right? So here, mouse is no longer. That means that dog is back at the top of my stack. If I use pop again, that of course means that I'm removing dog from the very top. This of course means that cat is now at the top of my stack and really the only item within my stack. So a stack is pretty straightforward conceptually. That being said, what can it actually be used for? I think the most apparent application for a stack is to track a history of steps. And this is actually a really broad thing that we can apply in many different contexts. For example, let's say that you were browsing on your computer's web browser. You can use a stack to track the history of websites that you visited. That way you can do things like go backwards or forwards through your history. In a more academic sense, we can use a stack to implement some backtracking algorithms. In particular, that refers to algorithms like depth first search, and we'll go over those algorithms later on in the course, right? So definitely take away the fact that stacks are super duper useful. It's gonna be used for a lot of algorithms down the line, right? So let's get some mastery of them right now. Just for funsies, let's visualize how we can use a stack to track our browser's history. So here I have the stack, and let's say that I'm visiting a website. Let's say I start by visiting google.com. That means I should push Google onto the stack. Since Google is at the top of my stack, that must mean that it's the current page I'm looking at. Now let's say I visited another website like Wikipedia. Of course, that means I push it to the top of my stack. And now since that Wikipedia is on top, that must mean that I'm currently looking at Wikipedia. Now let's say I click the back button in my browser. That just means we should pop the top of our stack. So we should just remove Wikipedia. And now that means that Google is now at the top of our stack, which makes sense because we should be currently looking at Google. Now I visit coderbyte.com, gets added to the top of my stack. And now you can see how this pattern holds true as we visit more sites, as well as hit the previous button in our browser. All right, now that we've spoken about what a stack is, as well as some basic applications of it, let's go ahead and implement our own stack. A stack is a really neat data structure because it can actually be implemented in a few different ways. For this reason, you may hear a stack referred to as an abstract data type. All that means is as long as we support the basic API methods that we can use on a stack, mainly push and pop, it doesn't really matter how we actually want to implement it under the hood, as long as we support those core features. So let's start by implementing a stack using an array. So I think that this is probably the simplest way to just get a stack uh, up and running, although we'll talk about some caveats in a little bit. So using an array, right now I'm in JavaScript, it's pretty straightforward. Let's say I defined my stack, it's just an empty array. If you're using an array, you really just have to commit to using very specific methods uh, on your array. I know that in the context of my stack, I should only operate at one end. Let's say that the last element of my array will represent the top of my stack. 
So if I use some methods in JavaScript like array.push, let's say I'm pushing some elements to my array, let's say I push A, and I also push B, that means that A is at the top of my stack, then afterwards B is at the top of my stack. So if I console.log it, of course I'll see those elements, right? We're kind of reframing this array as if the last element refers to the tippy top of the stack. So there we have it, B is at the top of my stack. Now let's say I wanted to remove the top element from my stack, I could just do my stack.pop, and that will remove the last element over here. So I should be removing B, and I'll end up with A at the top of my stack now. Cool. Now, of course, from here, if I just keep using a simply push and pop, I will get a nice stack behavior, right? So just to wrap this up, let's say I push a few more items. Let's say I push C and D. That means that D should be at the top of my stack, right? And then there's C below it, and then A at the very bottom of my stack. So as you can see, using an array as a stack is really, really straightforward. You don't really have to implement anything. You just have to sort of commit to using uh, only the specific stack-like methods over here, right? So in my case, that's push and pop uh, in JavaScript. Depending on the programming language that you're using, your language might actually have like a native type that actually implements a stack. Although some languages like JavaScript don't have a built-in stack type. That being said, you can just use an array and finesse some methods to make sure that it behaves just like a stack. So although using an array as a stack is very straightforward, we should definitely talk about some caveats. Depending on the programming language, a stack like this may not be the most efficient. I'll go ahead and tell you that for a stack data structure to be maximally efficient, it should do its push and pop operation in just a constant amount of time. I will say that in the case of JavaScript, pushing and popping uh, from an array does happen in constant time, although that would not be the case if I did something like use the front of my array uh, as the top of my stack, because then that would require shifting elements and messing with the indices throughout the rest of my stack array. So I think this is always something you should be aware of, right? Depending on the language you use, an array may not be the best choice. That being said, how can we overcome this issue? Let's say that your programming language of choice didn't have a built-in stack data structure and you really wanted a super efficient implementation of a stack. You could just implement it by yourself. And what's really great about a stack is you can implement it using a linked list, right? And that's really good because we just covered that in a previous lesson, right? So if you haven't learned about linked lists yet, I definitely recommend you check out our previous video. But that being said, it's actually uh, quite a bit simpler than our actual linked list implementation because it's very limited in what we should do. So let's start by laying down a foundation. So as a component of my stack class, I'm going to need a node class. I'll just refer to it as my stack node class here in JavaScript land. So I'll make my constructor. Uh, inside my stack nodes, I will still store values. That's pretty similar to our regular linked list. And of course, we'll be storing those values inside. And I will indeed need some next pointer, right? So I'll have some next pointer and I'll initialize that to null. And so far, this looks like a vanilla a linked list, right? Let's see how we would utilize this stack node class within my stack class, right? So this will be the main class over here. Now, when it comes to the constructor of your stack class, uh, you will need some initial pointer, right? In the context of just a plain old linked list, we did things like set like this.head equal to some uh, initial node or initial value. Uh, in this case, we won't refer to it as a head. Why don't we try to use some nice stack terminology? I believe you'll only need access to the top of your stack, right? So top here is analogous to like the head of a linked list. So we'll start with an empty stack, which means that this pointer ought to be null. So let's work on pushing to our stack, right? This would mean adding a new node into my stack, right? And so what I'll do is I'll have to take in some value that I'm trying to insert uh, into my stack. That being said, let's start to lay down a foundation for this function. So we know uh, when we create a stack, it's gonna be empty. Uh, really the first time that we push something into the stack, um, we're gonna have to handle this in an explicit way because we have to set the this.top pointer to be that initial node. Right, so I'll kind of work in a few extra things over here. I think it's really useful if your stack also knows how many things are inside. So I'll say maybe this.size equals zero, as I start out with an empty stack. Then I can do something straightforward like check, hey, if the current size of my stack is indeed zero, then I must be inserting the, the very first uh, item. So I should set this.top, right? So I'll just go ahead and say this.top equals my new stack node, and I'll create it with that given value. Cool. 
And now in the other scenario, that is if my stack is not empty, that means I should just chain a new value, right? So there are a few things uh, we'll want to do here. Let's start by just creating our new node. We know that this node should be at the top of our stack and I'll need to connect and point to the rest of the stack, right? So I could just reassign some stuff here. Let me save this as a variable. I'll say my pushed node. So this is a node that should end up at the top of the stack. And I'll need to make sure that it kind of continues the chain that builds the rest of my stack, right? So I can say push node.next and set that equal to this.top. Right. So if I write this operation, that kind of means that the push node is now resting on top of my old item that was at the top of my stack. And at this point, I want to reassign the this.top pointer, right? So I can say this.top equals push node. Cool. Let's say I had some current stack uh, that contains ABC. I know that the top pointer in my stack really points to the top element of A. And let's say that I'm adding something new. Let's say I'm pushing X into my stack. What I'm doing is I'm creating that node with a value of X and I'm setting its next to point to the current top. So that means that X is gonna point to A. And what I also do is set this dot top to B X. So it does end up with X at the very top of my stack. Since I'm adding an item to my stack, that also means I should increment the size over here. So this is looking uh, pretty good. Let's just go ahead and quickly test uh, this thing. So let's say I created my stack and I'll give it some initial stack. We'll say new stack and I don't need any initial arguments here. Um, but what I will do is say my stack dot push and I'll push some initial values. Let's say we push A, B and C. Cool, so A should actually be at the bottom of my stack in this example, C should be on top. And maybe we'll start by console.logging the size of the stack. So that should definitely be uh, just three. And what I'll also do is maybe just refer to the top of my stack. So I'll say maybe my stack.top, right? That would be referring to, to this property over here, which should be the C node uh, by the end. So let's go ahead and run this. Cool, so my stack does indeed have a size of three. And in terms of the top node that I printed out, it is actually the C node. Uh, just to make this a little consistent and really make it like an abstract data type, I should probably only be returning like uh, the inner value for a top operation. So maybe I'll write an additional method like get top. Very, very straightforward, just a simple getter. What I'll do is just return this.top.value. That way I don't have to expose uh, the user of this data structure to the actual inner workings in like the stack node and next pointers, right? So for this last call over here, I'll say my stack dot get top. That should just give me uh, the value C. Awesome. Cool, so let's keep it rolling and let's work on our nice pop method. So when you pop, you don't state a value you want to remove. By definition, if you're doing a stack, then you just want to arbitrarily remove the top uh, of the stack. So maybe a few things I'll do is, maybe I'll just check uh, if my stack is empty, right? So if this.size equals zero, and then there's nothing to really pop off, I'll just return, let's say, null over here. But in the other scenario, we'll want to handle uh, the actual removing of the top item. This is actually really straightforward. All you need to do is say this.top equals this.top.next next right so if i run line 47 this means i'm basically rerouting my top pointer and foregoing what was the old top so let's say i had this link list uh, acting as my stack i know that its current top is x if i do pop then all i'm doing is rerouting this dot top to point to its next right so i'm basically rerouting that pointer to just point to y and that means i've excluded uh, x from my list which means that it's no longer part of my list Cool, so that'll be my pop. And along with the pop operation, it's usually commonplace to have your pop also return the value that you just like removed from the top of your stack. And so maybe what I'll do is actually save that as well. So I think something kind of more useful would be something like const, we'll say popped node, and I'll save that as this.top before I remove it. That way I can just get at that value for my final return value, right? So I'll finally want to return, my popped node dot val. One thing we'll also need to be sure to do is manipulate the size of my stack. So I'll say this dot size minus minus, right? If I pop, that means I'm removing an item. And then let's go ahead and test this code. So I can say my stack dot pop. Now let's console.log that. 
So because this is a stack, that means it's last in, first out, meaning the last item you put in would be the first item you remove. So I should get C over here. Now let's also hit the size of this thing, and that should give me two, right? So I ought to get C followed by two over here. Now let's continue just popping some elements from our stack, right? If I pop again, that should give me B, pop one more time, that should give me A, and if I pop one final time, that would actually mean an empty stack. So this should give me null, right? So I'm looking forward to C, 2, B, A, and null. C, 2, B, A, null, and there we have it. And to be extra, extra sure, always wanna be robust in our testing, now my stack should be zero length, awesome. Awesome, so here's a nice from scratch implementation uh, of a stack, and it really just utilizes some linked list code. And in my eyes, it's kind of simpler uh, than a linked list to be honest, right? Because it's a stack, we're only ever going to be manipulating one end of the stack. So I actually don't require like any loops or recursive code here. You're just really messing around with uh, this dot top. So if we analyze the, the time complexity of this, um, it looks like in our push operation, it actually is going to run in constant time, right? There is no loops here. I only run like these fixed number of operations whenever I push a value. In the same way, pop also runs in constant time, right? So this entire implementation of a stack would give me a constant time operations for push and pop. And of course, in terms of the space complexity, this obviously uses up n space, right? If you're trying to store n values, you would need n uh, different nodes to comprise your stack. So there you have it. That's our crash course into the stack data structure. A few things I want you to take away from this lecture. Definitely remember that stacks are a LIFO data structure, meaning last in, first out. That means that we have very strict operations like pushing to the top of the stack, as well as popping, which means removing, uh, also from the top of the stack. In the next video, I'll show you a very classic problem that we can solve utilizing a stack data structure. So stay tuned for that.